Welcome to Deadball TV. Today, we're going to be talking about the latest transfer rumors regarding some of the players on the Ecuadorian national team. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and let me know down in the comments what national team you want me to cover next in terms of transfers or maybe manager news, player news, upcoming friendlies, whatever. Let me know down in the comments. Let's get into it. First player, we got Moises Caicedo. Now, if you've been watching the Prem, you would know that there's a team called Brighton. And this team, Brighton, they've been doing pretty well for a couple of years now. And one of the reasons, one of the main cogs in the Brighton machine the past couple years is the midfielder Moises Caicedo from Ecuador. In fact, he's been balling out so much that he's actually linked to Liverpool, Newcastle, and Chelsea. While I was very heartbroken that Ecuador didn't make it to the knockout rounds of the World Cup, I did think that Moises Caicedo especially had a great showing. That being said, though, it's not because of the World Cup that he's linked to these big teams, right? Moises Caicedo has been a dog in the Premier League for over a season now, like I'm saying. In my opinion, he's a top five defensive midfielder in the Premier and he's only 21 years old. His positioning is fantastic. He's an underrated passer. He's freakishly composed for somebody that's his age. And it might be a hot take. This is one of Jack's hot takes today. I think he might be the best slide tackler of any midfielder in the Prem. I mean, this guy knows how to put in a crunching tackle. So of these three clubs that he's linked to, I would say that Liverpool probably makes the most sense. And I say that because when you look at Liverpool's current midfield, a lot of people, myself included, have noticed that Fabinho who was kind of that rock in the defense, is kind of fading. They have a lot of possession midfielders, namely Thiago, playing right now, but they don't have that kind of sledgehammer that they've had in the previous seasons when Liverpool were so dominant. So I think bringing in a young guy, again, Caicedo being 21, it'll be 22 next summer, bringing that guy in to reinforce Liverpool's midfield, as well as the recent signing, Cody Gakpo, not sure if he's going to play up top or as a, a, a attacking midfielder, but whatever. I think that would make the biggest upgrade in how Liverpool are playing right now. With Newcastle, I think that would also be a great move, namely because if I think of a midfield that consists of Bruno Guimaraes and Moises Caicedo, I mean, god damn, that's a really, really good midfield and one that I would not want to play against. I feel if Newcastle partnered Guimaraes and Caicedo, they pretty much have something very similar to what Arsenal have right now with Thomas Partey, and Grand Xhaka. Caicedo would probably play more of the party role and Bruno Guimaraes would kind of be more of a box-to-box -box at that point. And the only thing they need to do at that point to complete the three-headed dragon is to get in an Odegaard-type midfielder, somebody who's almost entirely an offensive midfielder who can just pull the strings and let Guimaraes and Caicedo clean up all the mistakes and just completely dominate possession in the midfield. Newcastle currently don't have anybody on the roster like that, in my opinion. I don't think Willock's that guy. I definitely don't think Longstaff is that guy. But if they bring in another midfielder, and they will, you know, they got that, you know what I'm saying, then I think Newcastle could be even scarier than they are already. Chelsea makes the least amount of sense, and I would absolutely hate to see Moises Caicedo go there. I think it's a red flag to me that Chelsea are linked to quite literally every single player that's available. I think that shows that Todd Bowley and maybe even Graham Potter and the higher-ups, I'm not sure if they have a concrete plan of what they need to do. It kind of seems like they're just looking at, oh, this guy's talked about. Oh, this guy's been playing really well. What? Let's bring him in and see, see what we can do. Instead of having like a layout and buying players who fit that scheme, they're kind of just buying a bunch of random pieces and trying to make a puzzle. They already have N'Golo Kante, who's not quite the exact profile of Caicedo, but he's pretty close. And they have Kovacic. So I'm just not sure why you would bring in Moises Caicedo for an estimated, I've seen as high as 50 million, to kind of do battle with those two midfielders for playing time unless you're planning on letting one or both of them walk. But where do you guys think Moises Caicedo should go? Let me know down in the comments. Let's move it on to his teammate Jose Cifuentes, 23-year-old midfielder, can play like the kind of box-to-box -box and holding midfielder if he needs to, who is ironically linked to Brighton. Brighton are literally trying to recreate the Ecuadorian national team. If they bring in Cifuentes, then they have four Ecuadorians on the roster. I just think it's incredible. Brighton have literally mastered the art of buying players from the non-sexy markets. They realize that they don't have the buying power, or maybe they simply just don't want to spend the money getting in these Brazilians and these Argentines who typically come with a massive price tag. Not saying they're not worth it, but Brighton's obviously saying, okay, let's look at these markets that are untapped. Ecuador, Paraguay, Japan, I would argue even MLS. I know Cifuentes is not an MLS product, but he's playing in the MLS right now. And anybody making the move from MLS to the Premier League, I mean, that's pretty rare. Not a lot of big teams are willing to, to scout a player, much less sign one from the MLS. So I think that their transfer policy is, one, very unique, and two, it's working. Like I said, Brighton are one of the most exciting teams to watch 
in the Prem. Everybody thought they were going to fall off the Grand Potter left. That's obviously not the case. I was looking at the stats earlier. Cifuentes, 26 goal involvements in 80 games for LAFC. He got uh, almost almost 75 minutes of the World Cup for Ecuador. Um, I did think he struggled a little bit against Senegal, but honestly, the entire Ecuador team just looked kind of shite during that game, which was really unfortunate because because I thought they deserved to go through. I've already made a video about about all of the Ecuador games actually on the channel. If you want to like check those out, go back in time and you can see me vent about my sadness that they didn't qualify to the round of 16. Anyways, back to Jose Cifuentes. In the last year, according to transfer marks, his value has gone from six to 12 million. So this guy is on the up and up. Okay. And it's not hard to see why. I think Brighton are seeing that and realizing that now at 23, this is probably the perfect time to get Cifuentes. And if LAFC sell him, they're making bank on their investment. I don't know if this is going to be a January move, but what I am kind of suspecting is that if Moises Caicedo is moved on, I think Cifuentes could be looked at as a replacement. Again, not completely a like for like. I think Cifuentes is probably a little closer to McAllister, who is also rumored to be moving on. Regardless, it looks like Brighton are already kind of planning three steps ahead. Okay, when we lose two of our starting midfielders, or, or maybe only one of our starting midfielders, Who's the guy that we can bring in? We just saw them do this when they sold Cucurella and then they bring in Estupiñan. They sold Cucurella for what, 60 mil? And then they got Estupiñan and I want to say for 18. Phenomenal business. Phenomenal scouting. Brighton are goaded. I personally love this move. I love everything about this move. It's a Premier League team, but it's not in the spotlight. It's probably one of the best development clubs in the Prem. I think it's fantastic. But you guys let me know if you disagree in the comments. The last player we're going to talk about is my goddamn guy. My man, Piero Encampier. Piero Encampier currently is linked to probably like 15 clubs, but the ones that I've seen the most often, the most consistent is Spurs, Chelsea, and Inter Milan. I did a video, I think it was six months ago or may maybe a year ago talking about uh, just South American transfers. We were just talking... Damn, the sun just disappeared. We were talking about uh, different common bowl players and like the rumors and, and transfers that they were making. And Piero Encampier at the time was also linked to Tottenham. And I said in that video, I think he should wait. I think he should stay at Leverkusen. He's getting Champions League minutes. He's getting starting minutes in the Bundesliga, which is a very good fundamental, uh, or sorry, developmental league. And I think he needs just a little more time. He's 20 years old. He needs, there, there's no rush at all to get to the Prem or uh, Real Madrid. He's still got a couple years left. I also said in that video that for Leverkusen, the team that would be selling him, it would be in their best interest to wait until the World Cup is over because I was confident in Campier was going to have a good World Cup. He did have a good World Cup, and I felt like that was going to increase his value. According to Transfer Marks, his value went from $20 million to $25 million, so a $5 million increase. That's not bad, but what I'm seeing in the official kind of like bids that are rumored is between 30 and 35 mil for Pierre Encampier. And make no mistake, if Pierre Encampier was Brazilian, if he was English, if he was... Mexican even. This man's going for 65 mil. Anybody who wouldn't buy Piero and Campier for 30 million is an idiot. They should resign from their scouting department position. They should resign from football management, period. If Spurs get this guy, I will be over the goddamn moon. I will get his jersey day one. I'm a Tottenham fan. I don't know if I've said that before during an Ecuador video, but it would be a dream come true if this guy came to my club. And I think Tottenham would be a great fit. And again, 30 million, 30 million for a 20 year old center back already has 25 caps for his country playing Champions League football, playing in the Bundesliga for Leverkusen. Anybody who doesn't pull the trigger on this move is a fool, is a tonto in my opinion. Like there's no excuse to not trigger this transfer. And I was thinking a couple hours ago, I was like, damn, Kutu Romero and Pierron Campier in the back line. <sighs> pure filth, pure filth, the aggression in that back line, one red card a game. Joking aside, I think that is one of the weak points for Campier. Just a little too many fouls, airily, maybe because he's only six feet tall, he does struggle a little bit. And, and I feel like his position needs to be better. If you're gonna be a shorter center back, then you need to be on your man. You need to know where to be, to, how to read the flight of the ball. And he's 20 years old. So like, I'm not, this ain't a scathing criticism. Trust me. I freaking love the guy. Like I said, bring him in the Spurs right now. I will personally write a check to help fund that move to Tottenham if I need to. Before I talk about Chelsea and Inter Milan, I found a really, really good scouting article basically about Pierre and Campier. So if you're watching this video, maybe you're not Ecuadorian, maybe you've never heard of him, or maybe you saw him at the World Cup and you're like, damn, this guy's pretty good. Who is he? Uh, this, this article came out like four days ago. I'm going to put it down below in the description. Let me see. It was from TotalFootballAnalysis.com. A really good breakdown of the strengths and weaknesses of Pierre and Campier, talking about his recovery speed being elite. But like I said, kind of too prone to foul. Not very good in the air, but extremely comfortable carrying the ball forward. He's a very ball progressive 
left-sided center back for 31 mil. So check that out if you want to like read more in-depth analysis about Piero and Capier as a center half. So with Spurs, I already said I love it. We need a left-sided center half. I think he would start day one. I don't care if it's Eric Dyer. I don't care if it's Ben Davies. I don't care if you're trying to play Davinson Sanchez on the left. He is better than all three of those center backs. And to me, it's not even close. Maybe Eric Dyer is a little close. Davinson Sanchez is probably the most similar to him in terms of athleticism. But in terms of all around complete player again at 20 years old there's no contest he would start for spurs chelsea and i'm not just saying this because i'm a spurs fan i would absolutely hate this move again same point as moises i said earlier i don't think chelsea have a plan and on top of not having a plan they have five other center backs already on the roster one of them they literally signed yesterday the lad from monaco uh, Bat batashili bat Badiashile, Benoit Badashile, yeah, that guy. On top of that, they got Chalaba, they got Fofana, Koulibaly, and oh, Thiago Silva. I know Thiago Silva is like 43, but the man doesn't look like he's slowing down anytime soon. So Pierre Campier is not guaranteed minutes if he goes to Chelsea. He's not even guaranteed backup. He could potentially be like third in line. And I don't want Ecuador's best center back having to go into some toxic situation like that. I feel like Chelsea have already chosen who they want their center halves of the future to be. And they want it to be Fafana, and they want it to be Badashile, this new guy. And they got Koulibaly, who I know he's getting older, but he's still got a couple years left. And Chalaba, an academy product, if I'm not mistaken, again, I just, I don't see why Nkampier would, one, want to go there, and two, where would he fit in at Chelsea? I think it's a horrendous fit. Now, Inter Milan, I actually think it's a very good move. I'd be sad as a Spurs fan if he didn't come to my club, but I think Inter Milan, especially if they move on from Bastoni or if they move, who else kind of plays on that? Does De Vrij play on the left? I don't know who else is their uh, left side of center half, but if Bastoni moves on for probably a hefty fee, maybe Skriniar finally leaves after being linked away from Inter Milan for four years. If one of those guys depart, again, Pierre on Campier for a $30 million transfer, very much inside that Serie A budget, which is why I think it's credible, I think would be a good signing. And Inter Milan, good team, Champions League football, title contenders, contending for the uh, Coppa Italia every single year, probably likely to win trophies. And I mean, I'd be happy for the guy, honestly. I'm not the biggest Serie A fan. Like, I'm not an expert. I like watching the league, but, you know, I'm not a uh, Inter stan. So if you are if you are an Inter Milan fan and you've been hearing these rumors about Incampier, what do you think? Would you like to have him on your team? Do you think he would be a good replacement? Should Bastoni move on? Let me know down below in the comments. And that's going to be the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little, little coverage about some Ecuadorian transfer rumors that are going on. Like I said at the beginning of this video, if you want to see more content like this, I love talking about Ecuador. I love talking about all international football teams, especially the ones that don't get any love from the mainstream. Like, I know damn well there's not going to be an ESPN FC article about Ecuador. So Deadball TV might be the only place you guys can get this, in English at least. I'm sure there's plenty of amazing Ecuador YouTube channels in Spanish. But, you know, we're doing the English side of the coverage here. So, again, if that sounds like something you'd like to see, I encourage you sincerely to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell because we're going to be putting out a lot of content, a lot of content, from now until, well, basically until the channel has a million subs. Yeah, and let me know, uh, like I said, what team you would like me to make a future video on. You know, do you want me to talk about some of the Colombian prospects, some of the Venezuelan prospects who are linked to Premier League or European clubs, even MLS clubs? I'll do my research, man. I'm not afraid to uh, to get out the old reading glasses and do what I need to do to make these videos. So I hope you enjoyed. I certainly enjoyed making this. This was a lot of fun. I love talking about Ecuador. They're kind of like slowly becoming my, my second national team. You guys have been showing... A ridiculous amount of love on every Ecuador video that's been posted. It's the most most watched video on the channel. Is a video I did about the Ecuador national team. Almost got 10k views. Might even have 10k views. I don't remember. But anyways, I appreciate it, and and I kind of want to do stuff like this as a thank you to you guys for for all the love that you guys have been showing. So, anyways, I, all right, guys. <laughs> enough enough ranting. Before I get emotional, I start crying. I'll see you guys in the next video.